Hi, I'm Christy and I have three daughters, Georgia, Chelsea and Maeve. We live in Armadale, New South Wales. The younger two are at St Mary's. Hi, I'm Chelsea. Hi, I'm Maeve. We're sisters and we go to St Mary's Armadale. Maeve was our first daughter that we had diagnosed with a hearing loss when she was four. So I'm so grateful to the preschool teachers. They actually picked up her hearing loss and they said, look, we really think you should just get her hearing checked. So Maeve had her tonsils and ad adenoids out when she was three and she'd had speech therapy and we thought that most of her speech and language issues were resolved, but she was just still missing a few at that four-year-old screener. So we went off and had her hearing checked and turned out that she did have a bilateral hearing loss in both ears. We went down the process with Australian hearing and she was fitted with two hearing aids when she was at preschool. Hello, I'm Camilla and I teach year three at St Mary's. I teach Maeve, she requires um, a few adjustments in class, so she has a personal plan. We have a red cat system in the class, um, so that's the sound system that we use. It's pretty much just a microphone. It's helpful for us as well, so we don't have to overuse our voice, but it's good for the whole class um, as well, so regardless of where they're sitting, they can hear. Chelsea was eight when we went and got her tested, and she actually was diagnosed with a hearing loss in both ears as well, but it was particularly around the high frequency sounds that Chelsea was missing. So Chelsea had never had any speech issues or major learning issues. However, it turns out she does have a hearing loss in both ears. So she was also fitted with hearing aids when she was eight. My name's Marcel Garrow. I'm a year six teacher at St. Mary's Armadale, and I've got Chelsea in my class. As most girls go getting into the teenagers and the boys as well, uh, they start to become more socially aware and they're very conscious of being singled out within the group and um, socially, so we have that, in, take that into account. Just in general thinking about, is it making it obvious to the other students that we're giving special attention to someone? So we try and avoid that while at the same time making sure that they do get that attention that they need to access the curriculum and participate fully. We do a thumb dial and it's um, like the whole class does it as well and it's like seeing how we're getting the message so this is like yep got it might need another explanation of it or no nah, I need a couple more tries to get it. I love St Mary's because they've always listened I guess. Say we weren't feeling as confident with it we could say oh can I have a mini lesson and they'll like just give a second explanation. Hi, my name's Kelly. I'm the Year 6 teacher at St Mary's. We have a collaborative space for the Year 6 students. So Marcel and I work together with um, a large group of kids. We do use a lot of visual support for Chelsea and the other students in our room. We use the smart board to drive our instructions. So we give oral instruction as well as visual prompts. When I was in kindergarten, my friends were like, really new to um, a person with not as well hearing. They would go, okay, can you hear me okay? Um, would you like to choose the game? Because you might not understand or hear our game, but we're going to play. And ever since then, they've treated me like I don't have any hearing aids at all. So because Chelsea was eight when she was diagnosed, she particularly struggled being different, feeling different, wearing AIDS. It really took her a long time to accept the fact that these AIDS are only going to help her with her learning. We sold it to Chelsea in that it's the same as someone wearing glasses or sometimes your brain has to work so hard to be able to hear that you're not going to remember as many things as you would. We had a bit of a battle getting her to wear them each day but now we just make it part of her routine and part of Maeve's routine. Maeve was great because she was four, she just put them in and it's, it's always been a part of Maeve. You probably notice that Maeve has bright colours and she's really out there whereas Chelsea's are a little bit more concealed. Because of the adjustments that we've put in the classroom they have been subtle to the rest of the peer group, but definitely, um, you know, an impact for Chelsea. And so her confidence has really grown as a person. If you were to observe her in the classroom, you may at a distance not realise that she does have a disability because she does so confidently move within the space and 
um, relate to her peers and seek instruction from teachers and, and just really get about her business of learning in the room. Maeve's a happy child, she socialises with all her friends. Her friends don't see that her hearing is a problem, it's just a part of her, it's what makes Maeve Maeve. I love the collaboration that we have between the parents and the school community and the specialist. The girls both have personalised plans and Andrew and I have lots of input into those plans. This year Chelsea's had a bit of input into that as well because she is in year six and she's going to high school and so it's really important that she takes that ownership of her learning herself. So we've been able to implement her ideas. Closed captions is something that we do at home with the TV and we mentioned that to the school and now we know that they're using that on their YouTube clips and different things on the smart boards. So that's really great and I know it'd help all the kids in the class. Often other parents will say to me, oh, I, don't real I didn't realise that the girls have hearing issues and that's fabulous. Other kids will often say too, oh, look at that, you've got hearing aids. So the girls don't feel any different. They're not made to be any different to anyone else and I believe that is true inclusion. Thank you.